We're here with our political insiders, Democrat Kip Tu and Abdul Hakim Shabazz with IndyPolitics.org. And uh, I want to start with something that's actually uh, taken up in the City County Council, the panhandling ordinance. Is it possible to pass one that is lawsuit proof uh, before taking it up? I mean, anybody can sue. You know, that's just the joy of being in America. The question is, will it stand up in court? Uh, what the courts have said in the past is cities can regulate panhandling, but they have to be very careful of the time, place, and manner. You can't make it so overly broad that you eliminate all speech. I think this is a, a really good start, you know, keeping it away from 50 feet where a financial transaction takes place. But let's face it, these downtown panhandlers are a problem, and they are not homeless people. Two and, different categories. And they're picking places where people are making those financial transactions at this time. Right. Like, like I said, ATMs, parking meters, the whole nine yards. Well, look, homelessness uh, and hungry is a big problem in this community as across the United States. I do think that uh, most of these folks that are panhandlers in downtown Indianapolis are, are not in those categories. We have all kind of programs uh, throughout our city, uh, whether they're local, state, or federal programs to help people uh, with food problems. So I think that uh, we need to focus on those things, um, and hopefully this panhandling uh, ordinance that is going to be a compromise is going to work. Yeah, someone should be able to walk into our cigar bars and not be accosted by panhandlers. Yes, I mean, that's the most important thing. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and we'll see if any lawsuits come from that. All right, so you can catch more of, uh, on the Political Insiders on Indianapolis This Week with Rafael Sanchez. It comes up every Sunday at 730. And our conversation continues now on the IndyChannel.com. Let's talk about this issue of same-sex marriage that seems to be uh, getting a, a, a new wave going through. Is this going to dominate the 2014 legislative session, do you believe? Well, I've heard they're going to try to fast-track it, so it may not end up dominating it. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Both, both, uh, both leaders have indicated they're going to take it to the caucus, and the caucus is going to make a decision as to whether it comes out of a committee or gets assigned to a committee or what happens. Uh, it's going to be an interesting fight because I think if it is a private vote uh, that is taken in the House Republican caucus that uh, people don't have to raise their hand, but they put it down on a sheet of paper, I don't think it comes out. Uh, and this is going to be something real weird, but Kip and I actually may agree with each other <laughs> on this one. Uh, most of my Republican friends want nothing to do with this issue. The, the way I describe it is, uh, go back to your college days, there was somebody that you kind of hooked up with for a little while, and then the further things go along, you realize Where are you going with this? they realize right. they're crazy, and you want nothing to do with them. They keep calling you and blowing up your phone. That is what the marriage amendment has turned into mm -hmm. uh, for Republicans. And I know there's some that are afraid of a primary challenge, but there's actually uh, State Rep. Ed Clare, he actually voted against the amendment the last go-around. He's Republican uh, in a 50-50 district, no primary challenger, nobody came out, pardon the expression, uh, to challenge him. So fears of a, of a primary challenge might be somewhat grossly exaggerated. You know, speaking of college, let's talk about the way the universities are now uh, showing where they stand on this side of it, a lot of them opposing that am amendment. All but Purdue. Right. I mean, uh, it's interesting, that's a very interesting point uh, to me, is that we've had, uh, you know, IU, we've had... Um, uh, Ball State, we've had uh, yeah, Wabash, Wabash Notre, uh, not Notre Dame, I guess, uh, not Notre Dame and not Purdue. Uh, you know, Purdue is the last holdout. The former governor is, uh, is the president of Purdue. I think that uh, when he said he was going to take a sabbatical, for, sabbatical from politics, he wasn't telling the truth. No, but, uh, but the Purdue Senate did actually come out. Uh, the faculty Senate say, hey, we oppose the amendment. Uh, the governor, somebody called him up, I think well, like one of the newspapers up there, and said, hey, you know, that's the loudest voice we have so far. He didn't try to you know, disparage them. So I think the, the former governor has given sort of tacit uh, approval. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> give me trying a break. To, well, at least say, <laughs> trying to remain neutral here. Yeah, yeah, but but the thing is, and, and what's really important about the colleges and universities is if this thing goes on the ballot. This is where uh, some of the marriage amendment supporters may have may run into some unspoken opposition the, because if these folks come out and start registering to vote, you know that can have complications throughout the entire ballot in 2014. Agree with all that, but I want to go back to the the former governor and current president of Purdue. He's not remaining neutral. He's trying to keep his options open so that he might be a vice presidential pick uh, in the Republican primary. You know it, and I know it. Interesting to hear that. But it'd um, be good to have it either. Way, so other actually issues, as president either way <laughs> other issues you guys are, are thinking it will come up in the legislature next year uh, one of the big things is uh, mediating this back and forth between the governor's office and the superintendent of public instruction uh, earlier this week the speaker said this was a civil war the executive branch and they may have to step in they've been working quietly behind the scenes trying to mediate the peace but if necessary the legislature will step in because ultimately they are the drivers of education policy in Indiana the voters were pretty clear in the 2012 election that they wanted to slow down on all that stuff. That's why Glenda Ritz is sitting in the office. The Republicans are not paying attention to those election results at their peril. I've, I've, I've said it consistently. Um, that was a grassroots movement. It wasn't just 
to uh, defeat Tony Bennett, although that was a large part of it. But it wasn't just the personality of Tony Bennett. It was what per Tony Bennett was doing with, with, uh, with policy. And I think the Republicans are going to run over Glenda Ritz at their own peril. Far from it. I mean, basically, the, 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 the thing is, that first of all, if Glenda would do her job, we wouldn't be here. Oh, give me a break. We, would, what, we, would, what we, would, we wouldn't be here right now. Are we now. talking but, about the governor but, but, doing his job? When, all you, he does when, is when cut you miss, ribbons. When you miss deadlines, when you don't get people what they need, when you miss statutory things that you're supposed to do, it's called you're not doing your job. If she were a student, she'd be sitting in detention right now for not getting her homework done. All right, let's take it up to a higher level. <laughs> President, <laughs> President's numbers plummeting, his approval ratings plummeting. Is, you think he's going to enter a lame duck status? They plummeted after the, after, right after Syria uh, uh, reached a boiling point. Uh, it was a crisis moment. The president, uh, uh, I think, handled the Syria issue very well in his uh, poll. Polls recovered. If if the website is working, right? Another uh, yeah, in, another in issue. December, if, if the health if the website's working in December, I think that they'll stabilize. I don't know which moves faster: the president's dropping poll numbers or Glenda Ritz bolting out of a state board of education <laughs> meeting. I've been waiting all day to use that one, so I'm sorry. No, I mean, no, you know, presidents, you know, they have and flow, they have and Nobody time. laughed. The, <laughs> hey, not everybody gets it. I feel like Woody Allen over here. I mean, the thing is, is, is what do things look like in mid 2014? I mean, yeah. a few weeks ago, Democrats were riding high on the government shutdown. Now they're taking it on the chin. That's, that's why I always look at poll numbers with, with a little bit of grain of salt. Where are we next summer? You know, if we're still having problems, still having issues, then I think a lot of people are going to be in trouble. Yeah, the president's had a rough couple of weeks. There's no question about it. Uh, the website debacle uh, is going to bring his, his poll numbers down. The, also, the issue about whether you can keep your insurance or not has is, is also hurt him a great deal. Uh, and, and there's been just an incredible amount of stories. The focus of the media has been on those folks that uh, that promise was broken for, and so that's a that's a difficult thing for the president to have to manage. But the fact of the matter is, the Affordable Care Act is going to be working, and and 95% uh, of the people are going to be happy with it. And you think you can change it around by December? You're saying stabilize it at well, least. Maybe, maybe, maybe December maybe. of 2016. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's never running for office again. This really has an impact upon uh, people who have to uh, put their names on the ballot. And, 2014. All right, we'll leave the conversation there. Cape Abdul, always great to see you. Thank you. You can always catch the Political Insiders on Indianapolis this week with Rafael Sanchez, Sundays at 730.